sorry, we're going to go live in about a, I'm going to start about a couple more minutes, okay? About two minutes. Sorry about that. Just give me a minute here. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go live in about one more minute, okay? Do this and we're going to go live in a minute, okay? All right. Well, praise the Lord. I want to welcome you to uh, Heart of the King Ministries to our midweek uh, Bible study. Um, so glad that you decided to join us. Um, God is so good and God is so faithful. And um, I hope that you guys had a good day today. And, um, you know, even if your day was a little bit difficult, I just want to remind you that the Lord is on the throne. Amen. And uh, we're just going to open up in prayer. And I'm sorry, I'm just trying to get situated here and make sure that my share is good so people can see my share. Um, so we're going to just open up in prayer. I'm going to shut this door and we're just going to go to the throne room of the Lord. Let's draw near to God. It says in the Bible, if we draw near to God, that he will draw near to us. And so let's just pray. Amen. There's power when you and I pray, when we seek the Lord. And so let's pray. Lord, we just come before you tonight, Lord, and we just thank you for your word. Thank you that your word has been preserved, Lord God, that you protected your word, God, for so many thousands of years, Lord God, from generation to generation, Lord. And we thank you, God, for the privilege of having your word, Lord God, for the privilege of being able to open it and read it, Lord. And we ask that you give us understanding that comes from the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you'd open our eyes tonight, Lord God, that you'd give us the illumination, the revelation that comes from you. We praise you and we give you the glory, God. I pray that I would decrease, that you would increase increase that you would use my life, God. And thank you for your unfailing love in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We are going to um, talk about the book of Revelations, and, and we're going to continue to talk about the second coming of Christ. And we begin to speak about the second coming of Christ 
uh, last Wednesday. And so we're going to continue our study. But the good news is that Jesus is coming back. Amen. And he's coming back soon. You know, I pray that we would have the oil in our lamp and that we would keep it burning. Amen. That we would be prepared, that we would be a bride waiting for the Lord's return. Amen. And so I want to take you to the book of Revelations, chapter 19, verse 12. And we're going to continue to read about the second coming of the Lord and just talk about a few things. And so just open your heart and I believe God will speak to you. Amen. The book of Revelations 19, verse 12. This is what it says. Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. That white horse is always lead someone in victory. And how many guys know that Jesus is victorious riding the white horse? And we read a little bit about this uh, last Wednesday. So it's kind of a recap. And he who sat on him, who is called faithful and true and in righteousness, he judges and make makes war. So praise the Lord that the Lord is faithful. Praise the Lord that the Lord is true. Praise the Lord that his judgments are righteous and that judgment is given to the son. And it says this, that his eyes were like a flame of fire and no one on and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name that no one knew except himself. And he was clothed with the robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. And this is where we left off last Wednesday. And we talked about that. We talked about the importance of understanding that name, that the word of God is revealed um, in, in the gospel of John and that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so we know that this is Jesus in the book of Revelations. And so we're going to continue our study in Revelations 19, 14. And this is what it says. And the armies and and, and he comes and, and he comes back clothed in a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of God. And he comes with the armies in heaven clothed in fine lin linen white and clean, followed him on white horses. So here we see that Jesus is second coming, that when he comes back, that he's going to come back with the armies of heaven. Now the armies of heaven are angelic hosts, that he's not going to come back by himself, that when he comes back, he comes back riding on a horse and he comes back in, um, in fine linen, white and clean, and, and people followed him also on white horses. So Jesus is on a white horse. And here we see the armies of heaven on white horses that are clothed in fine linen, white and clean. That represents purity. That represents holiness. And the armies in heaven are these angelic hosts that come back with Jesus. Matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 27, Jesus says this, for the son of man will come in the glory of his father, with his angels. Amen. And so when Jesus comes back, he's going to come back with an army of heavenly hosts riding on a white horse. And also there's going to be this army that are clothed in fine white and linen, linen, and they follow him also on white horses. Those white horses symbolize the victory. Because how many guys know that our Lord is victorious and those who follow the Lord unto him coming back in his second coming are victorious, that he's a victorious and they're following him. And the Lord also speaks of believers. I believe that the Bible is very clear that not only is there going to be angelic hosts in the second coming of the Lord, but there's going to be believers that are going to be coming back. Amen. With the Lord. And matter of fact, in 2 Timothy 2.12, it says this. It says, if we endure with him, we will also reign with him. And I believe when the Lord comes back and is coming, there's going to be a thousand year period. It's what we call the millennium period. And during this millennium period, I believe that we are going to reign with the Lord. I believe that the Lord is going to come back and all those who died in the Lord are going to come back with him. Amen. It's going to be a blessing. It's going to be an awesome time. In Revelation 6, 9, it talks about martyrs and these martyrs that are waiting for the second coming of Jesus. And Revelation 6, 9, this is what it says. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, how long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth. 
Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that these should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. And so here we see that Jesus, I believe that he's going to come back and he's going to come back with these martyrs. He's going to come back with these people that are waiting for the vengeance, that are waiting for Jesus to avenge their blood. And Jesus is going to come back and wage war with eyes of fire and declare judgment and come in his second coming. It's going to be an awesome time. He's coming soon. Amen. Let's get ready. Let's stay ready. And, and I just want to share with you a little bit more scriptures about the second coming of the Lord. And what I'm going to share with you, um, also, I want you to understand that it's, um, you know, going to be a little bit of the rapture as well. And so for those of you who hold to a pre-rapture theory, you're going to have to do your homework and you're going to have to see the difference between the rapture and the second coming of the Lord and what that looks like. But I'm just going to read it just the way it is. I'm just going to read the scriptures and I want us to read it and to understand it just the way it is. Um, I'm going to say this, that I want to focus on the things that I do understand because we don't have all understanding. I don't have all understanding, but I do want to focus on that there is going to be a rapture. I do want to focus on that Jesus is coming back soon. I do want to focus on for us to be prepared and be ready and to hold on to the hope that God has given us. And 1 Thessalonians 5.13, look at what it says. It says, but I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep or those who died, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. So here's the thing. The people who died before us, amen, we don't want to have sorrow as others who don't have any hope that we're gonna not going to see our loved ones again. We will be reunited. We will see our loved ones again. And I believe that they will be coming back with the Lord, riding on the white horses with the angelic host to go reign with the Lord in this 1,000-year millennium period, okay? And this is what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with them those who sleep in Jesus. So it's important that, you know, people who have died um, are not waiting. Amen. It's important that we hold to uh, what we believe is to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. That we don't want to hold to something called a soul sleep. See, people are in heaven when they die right away. Remember the thief on the cross and Jesus told the thief, he said, today you will be with me in paradise. But uh, Thessalonians tells us, uh, we believe that 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 God will bring with them him those who sleep in Jesus. So in this second coming and when the Messiah comes back, he's going to bring with those those who died. Amen. He's going to bring with them those who died and they're going to come back with the Lord. It's going to be an awesome time riding on white horses, ready to rule and ready to reign. And those martyrs who died for their faith, he's going to take vengeance on them. It's going to be an awesome time. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the shout, amen, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, hallelujah, when that trumpet sounds, amen, it's all going to be said and done. When that trumpet sounds, Satan will finally be defeated. When that trumpet sounds, the Lord will come back and reign on this earth and fulfill the messianic prophecies of the ruling and reigning Messiah. It's going to be an awesome time. Amen. And so, um, and so the Lord himself would descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Amen. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Praise God. There's going to be a rapture, whether you're pre-rapture, mid-rapture, post-rapture, there is going to be a rapture. We are going to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. It's going 
going to be a blessing. The dead in Christ are going to rise first with their new resurrected bodies. Amen. And come back with the Lord and his second coming. It's going to be an awesome thing. And he says this, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Praise God. This world is temporary. This life is short, but we are always going to be with the Lord forever. We will be with our God. He says, therefore, comfort one another with these words. And so if you lost a loved one, I just want to bring you that comfort. You know, I just want you to know that there is a better day coming, that there is a rapture, that those who died in the Lord will come back with him. Amen. We will all be reunited. It'll be a blessing. That rapture that comes, we those who are alive will be caught up with the Lord in the air. It's going to be a great time. Jesus is coming. So get ready. Amen. Now this I say, brethren, that and now I want to take you to Corinth, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. Talk a little bit more about the second coming of the Lord, a little bit more about the rapture. Again, if you want to get into the pre-rapture, you're going to have to look into these scriptures. I'm just reading them as is and just in its un- entirely uh, totality or or just a scripture as it is. Amen. And it's important that we hold to these truths and believe in them. And again, I don't have it all figured out. We don't have all the answers, but I do know that Jesus is coming. We do know that when he comes, he's going to come with the shout, with the voice. Amen. With the shout, with the trumpet, that's going to sound. Amen. It's going to be a blessing. Amen. He's going to stand, descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel. It's going to be an awesome time. It's going to be an awesome thing. Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, this is what it says. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You got to be born of the spirit. You got to be born again of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. Uh, Nor does corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Praise God. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet sound, the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and these shall be changed. Praise God. The dead is going to be raised. That last trumpet is going to sound. Jesus is going to come back. The rapture will come. Praise the Lord. We will take off um, corruption and, and put on incorruption. We will take off immortality and put on mortality or excuse me, or take off mortality and put on immortality. We will forever be with the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming back. Praise the Lord. He's coming back with the shout. Praise the Lord. He's coming back with the voice of the archangel. Praise the Lord at the last trumpet. Amen. Remember the song when the saints go marching in. Amen. I pray that we would be part of this remnant, that we would be the children of God, that we would be the bride of Christ, that either we would be caught up with the Lord. Amen. Or we would be coming back with the Lord in his second coming, that we would be prepared and we would be ready and 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 this is all this is what he says also um for this corrupt corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corrupt corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is your sting Oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We are victorious. Amen. We have the victory. We are going to be riding on that white horse with the coming back with the Lord. Amen. If we died in the Lord, amen, to be absent in the bodies, to be present with the Lord, we're going to be with the Lord. But praise God, we're going to come back with Jesus. It's going to be an awesome time. And this is what it says. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Amen. Don't change your mind. Keep following Jesus. Hold on to this truth. 
Keep believing in who the Lord is. Don't change your mind. Be steadfast. You know, it blows my mind sometimes when I hear about a Christian musician who loses their faith or maybe somebody who loses their faith. Amen. I want to encourage you. Don't lose your faith. Be steadfast. Jesus is coming unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your, your, your labor isn't in vain. Amen. Because the Lord, he loves you and he cares about you. Um, sorry. Um, and so in Revelations 19, verse 15, going back to this message, um, this is what it says. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. Praise the Lord that, that the word of God is living and breathing and Jesus is the word. And that sharp sword reaches and pierces the heart and discerns the heart. Out of Jesus' mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he will strike the nations and he himself will rule them with the rod of iron. Praise the Lord that this is going to be the ruling Messiah, the reigning Messiah, the Messiah that comes back and reigns. Christ ruling with the rod and, and iron is a fulfillment of a messianic prophecy. You know, and some people, they missed, you know, they missed the second coming of the Lord. You know, they missed um, I mean, excuse me, they missed the first coming of the Lord and the, the, the Pharisees missed when Jesus came because they were looking for this reigning Messiah. They weren't looking for the suffering Messiah. But here's the thing. The reigning Messiah is going to come. Christ is going to rule. And this is a thousand year millennium period. He is going to rule. And even forever after that, Jesus is going to come back to this earth and rule and reign. Amen. And Psalms 2, 8 and 9 is fulfillment of this prophecy when he comes with the rod of iron to rule. It says Psalms 2, 8 and 9. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Jesus is the only begotten son of God. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possessions. And you shall break them with the rod of iron. You shall dash, dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 4. This is what it says about this messianic prophecy, about this ruling Messiah that's going to rule and strike the nations. And he himself will rule with the rod of iron. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the reigning Messiah and he's coming back. But look at what it says in Isaiah 11, 4. But with righteousness, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. Thank the Lord that he's going to come back and make every wrong right. And even though all the enemies are going to fight against the Lord, Satan is going to try to fight against the Lord when he comes back. The Antichrist is going to fight against the Lord. The false prophet's going to fight against the Lord. All the kings and all the nations are going to try to fight against the Lord. But the Lord is going to be victorious. Amen. When he comes back riding on that white horse. And I just want to remind you tonight, you're victorious too. Maybe you feel defeated. Maybe you feel discouraged. I just want to remind you that you are victorious because King Jesus, our champion, rules and reigns. Amen. In Revelations 19, 15, and he himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written. Now the Lord has many names, the word of God. Amen. And here we see another name. And I want you to listen to this name. You're going to like this name. This name is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is greater than any principality, greater than any power. He is greater than any king on this earth. He is coming back. He's going to rule and he's going to reign. Amen. It's a blessing. And in Revelations 19, 11, let's keep reading. And then I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cry, cried with a loud voice, 
saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the great God. Now, this is not the supper that he talks about, the great wedding supper. This is just a feast of the birds that are basically all the flesh that are going to be massacred. All of Jesus's enemies are going to be humbled. All of the enemies of God are going to be destroyed. He is the Lord and he is real. Amen. He's coming back soon. We've been given the victory that you may in verse uh, Revelations 19, 18, that you may eat the flesh of the kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and those who sit on them and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. The Lord is going to be victorious. Amen. He's going to destroy. That's really what it's saying. He's going to destroy those who came and fought against him because who can withstand Jesus? Who can fight against the Lord? Who can withstand the power and the plan that God has? Satan is doing all he can right now to run havoc. And his time is short. But I just want to remind you that we have the victory. And Revelations 19, 19. And then I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and the armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on his horse and against his army. So this is what we call the battle of Armageddon in Revelation chapter 16, verse 16. It gives us a little bit more of a picture of the battle of Armageddon. And really what's going to happen is the Antichrist and all the kings of the earth and all the armies are going to wage war to try to stop Jesus from ruling and reigning on this earth. But just remember that Jesus can't be stopped, that God can't be stopped. I know that Satan wants to make us silent. Amen. That Satan wants to shut us up, you know, from the times of John the Baptist when he was beheaded to all the martyrs that are sitting in heaven that are waiting for Jesus to come back to avenge their blood. They cannot stop the work of God. Satan cannot stop the plan that God has. Amen. Satan is is defeated. Satan has lost. Satan is a loser and a liar and he is not the king. There is a king and he is coming soon and he is the king of kings and the lords of lords and he's coming to reign and he's coming to rule and he's going to rule and reign and be the reigning Messiah. Amen. And so again, uh, many of the, the Jewish people, um, Many of Israel, they missed the Messiah because they were looking for this reigning Messiah. They didn't understand that first there would be a suffering Messiah. The book of Isaiah, amen, chapter 63, that there would be a suffering Messiah that died for us, that cares about us. But then after the suffering Messiah and after a certain amount of time, that there would be a period that the reigning Messiah would come, amen, and fulfill those prophecies Praise the Lord. Amen. And he comes and he comes against them in the battle of Armageddon. And this is what happens in Revelations 19.20. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. And so what's going to happen is there's going to be a thousand year period that Satan is going to be bound up after the battle of Armageddon. Jesus is going to have the victory. He's going to bring back those who are dead, those who died, they're going to rule. They're going to reign with Jesus for this a thousand year millennium period. Okay. And, and he's going to come back and, um, Sorry, I lost my thought for <laughs> I lost my thought for a minute. But um but anyways, but the but but the beast yes is going to be captured, excuse me. For a thousand years he's going to be held up in this little holding chain or this kind of this prison and eventually he's going to get let loose and and eventually he's going to be destroyed altogether. There's going to be one final battle and he'll be destroyed altogether. And look at what happens, what it says. And 
And these two were cast into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. At the end of the day, that's where Satan is going to go, to the lake of fire. At the end of the day, the false prophet is going to the lake of fire. At the end of the day, those who worship the beast, those who gave their allegiance to the false prophet and to the Antichrist will be thrown into the lake of fire. At the end of the day, all the enemies of the Lord will be burned up. And the rest, it says, he says, were killed with the sword, which proceeds from the mouth of him who sat on the horse and all the birds were filled with their flesh. And so Jesus is coming and Jesus says this is a simple question. Those who if you are not for me, then you are against me. Amen. And so here's the question I want to ask you tonight. Are we for the Lord? The lake of fire is the final judgment of God. And, and there's only one way to escape this final judgment is that your name is written in the book of life. That's it. There's no other way. And the only way that your name can be written in the book of life is if you choose to believe and accept that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and that he rose again on the third day. If you choose to believe and receive him as your Lord and as your Savior, then you will be saved from this uh, lake of fire that is very real. Now, hell is a real place. It says in the Bible that it was created for the demon and for the, uh, excuse me, created for the fallen angels and created for Satan. But I just want to tell you that you don't have to go there. It wasn't created for man. But the thing about it is that man needs a savior. And so I just want to encourage you to be saved from this lake of fire, to be saved from the hell. To be saved from the judgment that's going to come. And in order for you to be saved, you have to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Mankind needs a savior. Mankind needs to be forgiven and needs to be redeemed because they've all sinned. We've all sinned and we all need the forgiveness of God. And so I just want to encourage you tonight. If you need the forgiveness of God, if you need to be reconciled with God, you can. Because I want you to escape this judgment. And, 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 and praise God that we can escape the judgment of God, that we don't have to be under the wrath of God. We don't have to be the enemies of God. Amen. But we have to choose. We have to choose whom this day we're going to serve. Amen. We have to make a decision. And God has gave everyone a decision to make, to choose to believe in Jesus or reject this Jesus. There's only one Savior. There's only one Messiah. There's only one that's going to reign, that's going to come back. And so I want to encourage you to believe in Jesus, to become saved from this judgment that's going to come, to be on the winning team. Amen. Don't be on the losing team. Be on the winning team. Amen. Be on the team that's saved. And you want to be saved. Deep down inside, I know that you do. And so in order for you to be saved, you got to become born again. In order for you to become born again, you got to give God all your heart and give God all your life. You got to surrender your life to Jesus. You got to recognize your sin and confess your sin to the Lord and believe in your heart that he died and rose again on the third day. And it says in the Bible, if you do that, that you will be saved. Jesus is coming back soon. The signs are everywhere. There's a great shaking and our time is short. And so I want to encourage you to believe in Jesus. And if you're listening online and you need to accept the Lord, then you could say a prayer with me. And again, you don't need me. You can do this all by yourself. There's one mediator between God and man, and that's Jesus Christ himself. But I could lead you in this prayer and help you as a guide. And so if you're here and you need to be saved, you need to be forgiven of your sin when Jesus comes back, you want to be ready. You don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be caught when Jesus is coming back as his enemy. You don't want to be deceived by the Antichrist with great lying, uh, lying wonders and signs and be deceived by the false prophet. You want the truth. And the only one who can give you the truth is Jesus. That's the only one is the Lord. And so if you're here today and you need to be saved, just repeat after me and God will see your faith. It's not a special formula or something like you said a prayer and now I'm saved. It is a lifestyle that you need to continue. 
But if you're here and you're listening and you do need to accept the Lord, you do need to be saved from the wrath that's going to come. I want to encourage you to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Come pray with me. Just say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, but I know that you are the Savior. I believe you died for my sin, and I believe that you rose again on the third day. I turn from my sin, and I turn my heart and my life over to you. I ask that you'd fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you said that prayer, I want to welcome you to the family of God. I want to encourage you to keep believing in Jesus. For those of us who are waiting for the Lord, his return is coming, and he's coming soon. Remember, he's coming back riding on a white horse. Remember, he's going to come back with all of us. If we happen to die before the return of the Lord, don't worry. To be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord, but we're going to receive a new body, and we're going to be coming back on white horses and we're going to reign with the Lord during this a thousand year millennium period. It's going to be an awesome time. It's going to be a blessing. I want to encourage you to keep holding on to your faith. Amen. I'm not telling you that I have all the answers in the book of Revelations or I understand it all because I don't. And I think that we do see in part But what we do know, we're going to hold on to. There's going to be a rapture. The rapture is going to come. Praise the Lord. We are going to be caught up with the Lord in the air for those of us who are alive. And forever we are with the Lord. We are going to be reunited with our loved ones, with those who have passed away. Don't worry, you will see your loved ones again, and they are not dead. They are alive and well if they believe in Jesus. Amen. Death, where is your sting? It's swallowed up in victory. Jesus is coming back soon. If you guys want to come join us on Sunday, you're welcome to at 1410 3rd Street, suite number 11 at 1410 3rd Street, suite number 11 in Riverside, uh, California. If you want to join us, Sundays at 1045 a.m. Um, if, if you're far away and you said that prayer, I want to encourage you, go, go get plugged into a Bible-believing church, to a Spirit-filled church. Go get baptized, read your Bible, and start walking with the Lord. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you guys. Keep your faith. Amen.